Hey guys, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In today's video, we are going to be taking uh, the top secret NASA space plane out for a spin, uh, also known as the X-37B, which is developed by Boeing. Uh, it is a, uh, a top secret aircraft, like I said, or a spacecraft, or a space plane, rather, uh, that does uh, kind of tests out new technology, and it probably does a lot of things that we don't know about. Um, but we, you know, we do know it exists. We have seen pictures of it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we are going to recreate it. So um, it's in that fairing, obviously, as we just depart now, and we can start our gravity turn off. Pretty much just a standard rocket two stage. We have some Macedons on the bottom, and then a Rhino at the top. It's uh, seven Macedons on the bottom, and then just one one singular Rhino at the top, which will get us more than to our orbit. And uh, there we go, just staging away the bottom stage. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to actually discuss what this mission is, because uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a space plane, but you know we have to go somewhere with it. We have to use it for something. Uh, the real uh, real X thirty seven B is really just a science slash I don't know Illuminati military technology that it does. Uh, it just hangs out in uh, low Earth orbit. Actually, it can stay there a long time. Like there have been ones that have stayed there for like two years. It's kind of, it's kind of nuts, but. Uh, we are going to be taking ours out to low MUN orbit, and we are going to be dropping a payload off at the MUN. Uh, because if you don't know, um, when I did my Artemis series, which technically isn't over yet, but I probably won't do any more videos, but uh, I have uh, Jeb, Bill, and Valor all on the surface. They landed on the MUN with the, uh, the Dynetics lander. And they, they, they need it. They, they can't, they're not coming back for a while. Um, and, and Jeb and Bill, if you don't know, they are... Um, they are, they are part of my series, Make Dress Great Again. They're like the two candidates that are going to make Dress Great Again. Jeb and Bill, they're running mates. So they need to they need to get ready and get prepared because they need to get to Dress because, you know, Election Day is coming up. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send them a care package uh, just to, you know, keep their spirits up while they wait for their, um, their ride to Dress or to keep them doing something productive. So we're going to take the X-37B, which there it is right there. Uh, just coming out of the fairing, and they are going to be uh, receiving a package that this aircraft will drop off for them. And uh, if you don't know what Make Dress Great Again is, by the way, it's kind of a colonization series I have going on on the channel. Uh, basically, I'm just colonizing jets. We're doing like space stations, SSTOs, bases. It's it's epic. We it's, uh, once every other day is a series. So if you're uh, interested in that, um, feel free to hang out with the channel. Um, if you, you know, feel free to subscribe. Uh, a lot of subscribers, by the way, guys. Thank you for all those new subs. It's been amazing. I've gotten so many new subs. Uh, it's been like 70 subscribers in the last f less than a week. So you guys are epic. Uh, just planning our maneuver now out to the MUN. We do, as you can see, we're just switching over to uh, Jeb and Bill. We're going to leave Val inside because she is inferior. She is not as epic as these two candidates. You know, they do actually have a lander. They um they could just they could just take off on their own. But they do not use such inferior means of transportation to such high quality individuals. They need a more glamorous mode of transportation, which we will you know, stay tuned for the the Make Dress Great Again series will eventually show up later because they do at some point have to get to their get to their uh, home planet. Um, and you know, do some campaigning, or not their home planet, but their the planet they want to run for. I don't know. I don't know, I'm really getting too far into the the, the made up story with this with the series, but that's what happens. And I've extended the solar panel, which kind of looks weird in hindsight. I really shouldn't have put it there, but eh. And uh, also, one thing that you don't you might want to notice about this aircraft is it is uh, it has the the engine is offset from the center of mass, or just offset. Why that is, I do not know. But in real life, that's how it is too. So you know, you gotta gotta stay true to the real life counterpart. So that is the uh, method we pursued, or I pursued to. You know, it's a uh, it's weird. I don't know why they do that. They probably are trying to make room for some sort of experimental something or the other. You you know, the top secret laser. To, I don't know what they do up there. Uh, I'm using a cheetah, by the way, for the engine. Uh, the real one uses some sort of engine, I don't know, it's not like a popular engine that anyone uses, so I just used the Cheetah because it was similar in size. The Cheetah is 
brown though, and the real one is not brown, it is black. So that, that you know, that's a little kind of, you know. What else is that supposed to do? I could have used something like maybe a terrier, but the bell didn't look exactly like the cheetah. It's not important, it's just an engine. Uh, but, we, you know, we had a lot of Delta V, so I mean, you know. It, we, it got the job done. Just uh, now uh, we're arriving at the MUN, by the way, and we're going to be flipping to a retrograde direct into our insertion burn. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> the engine has very little TWR. Like, if you saw our burn, our uh, translunar injection burn, uh, that thing is an eight minute burn to go 800 meters a second. That is nuts, especially for a craft this small. I mean, although it, it is kind of, you know, filled up all the way with fuel and it has a payload in the payload bay, but still, mate, still. Oh, uh, by the way, um, I'm testing some new stuff with the microphone. Uh, let me know if you guys think that it, it sounds better. So yeah, let, let me know in the comment section if you want to. And let me know how, why I decided to get into such a stupid orbit, because yeah. Why did I get into such a low orbit? Jeez. Yeah, if you don't know, the North Pole of the Mun is very, very hilly. Like, the rest of it isn't very hilly, the North Pole is, so that can get you. Well, I'm not in a polar orbit, uh, just because, you know, Jeb's out in the South Pole-ish area. But, you know, if you ever don't get into like an eight by seven kilometer orbit like I did, um, I think that seems pretty obvious. I, I I shouldn't have done that, but I did. And now we're gonna reopen the fa uh, payload bait, or not reopen, just open it. Um, well, good thing I had a quick save, right? And I was able to raise the orbit a little bit after the quick save. So uh, that means we are good. And now you can see our payload, which really doesn't look like much. It is just basically a fairing with some fuel tanks on top of it. Uh, but don't don't worry, we will. It will, more will be revealed later uh, because you know we gotta protect the care package. Um, it's very important to Jeb, and he can't, you know, let it be exposed to the forces of what well, it was just at the top of a rocket and was, but that's not important. Uh, we're now just going to, uh, you know, we're going really fast. Our orbit is still very, very, very low. It's actually kind of nuts how fast we're going over the surface of the Mun. That's, uh, that's an interesting one. But now we're just going to do a slight correction or plane change maneuver to get ourselves lined up with Jeb's landed capsule and Bill's there and Valentina, the relevant person. She's not part of the team because you know Jeb is the Jeb's the 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 the, um, the main guy, and then Bill is the the, the running mate or the the VP. And then Bob is the campaign manager who who he has like his own little mini series. Uh, if you don't know, I have like a mini series that I have only, it's going to be like once, probably every Saturday, where uh, Bob is just going to go out and try and uh, plant flags on different locations, different planets, uh, to help raise awareness for the campaign, try and spread the message. And he was using some like maybe creative craft or some replica or something. So yeah, he, Bob's a campaign, yeah, <laughs> like I said, I'm getting way too much into like, the lore of this irrelevant series that no one probably cares about. But either way, we're coming into land. This is probably what, you know, you guys are here for the mission, not here to let me hear me ramble on about my made up storylines. Uh, so we're gonna have to do like a weird flip maneuver here in just a second. Uh, just because, yeah, we kind of need, we needed to, we need to land the, the payload the other way, but it, the, it's a giant flag. A giant make dress great again, Jeb and Bill flag. You'll probably see a little bit better when you get a little bit. Yeah, there it is. There's a little bit of shot of it. But yeah, that's that's what Jeb and Bill are. They're getting a giant flag so they can stare at their amazing their amazing flag while they wait for their um, their superior transportation method. So, also, my landing this thing was not easy, um, mainly because I didn't um, get rid of the solar panels. Uh, or attract them so like it was basically impossible so after like you know this is really sped up after <laughs> after a bit of trying this I decided to finally just go land it and then retract the solar panels and then uh, yeah, land the flag on top because we need to get the flag as high as possible and so everyone all like the three people that are on the moon right now can see it but they can admire it nevertheless but there it is we are down and our last thing we have to do is to uh, detach the uh, the kind of landing stage. You have to make sure I turn off the engines on the lander, or else the lander would, would start flying away. I think that would be good to do that. Uh, but there it goes. It goes way out there. 
Um, it probably, I probably should have pitched it over a little bit because it gets, uh, you'll see in a second, it gets disturbingly close to crashing into Jeb, or part of it does. Like we go there, coming in, coming in, kaboom. And then, yeah, something explodes right next to Jeb. I have no idea what that was, but we can't be harming the candidate, man. He's already, you know, on the mun, which is not a good place to be. <laughs> you know, you think this guy would be protected, maybe, you know, or, you know, he's hanging out in space. But all the dreads is in space. Well, he'll be on the base. I don't know what I'm talking about. I should be talking about is our return. Uh, so the X-37B has basically fulfilled this mission now, and all it has to do is return back to Kerbin just so we can, you know, reuse it. That's a pretty important thing. You don't want to be wasting money, especially when you have a plane, and it's like whole thing is about reusability, which, if, you know, by the way, that's one of the main missions of the, of the actual X-37B. So that's what we are going to do. The only thing that kind of annoys me is um, I have that uh, Mark three to 3.75 meter adapter piece in the back there and then the the 3.75 meter fuel tank is a different color a different shade of white than the than the mark three parts are which i don't know why it is i wish they could all just be the same shade but it kind of does make the thing look weird but i you know i kind of had it just had to do that way because the thing does actually get a little bit wider the actual plane near the back so yeah hopefully that's not too big of a deal now it's just gonna do our uh, return burn. I don't know what it's te what technically called, but uh, our return burn, where we are at our apple 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 apples apple 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 apples apple apples. That's that's you know that's definitely not how you say it, but that's how that's how that's how I say it. You have to respect my. No, I don't. I don't know what I'm talking about again. I got up way too early this morning, guys, and it's uh, it's 10 o'clock right now, a.m. when I'm recording this, and I usually am not even up by 10 a.m., so, but I had to shovel the driveway, because it snowed, by the way, here, which is kind of nuts. Um, I live in Minnesota, if you don't know where that is, um, if you don't live in America, it's, it's north, it's right next to Canada, and we got snow yesterday, which was ridiculous, but I don't think you guys care about my shoveling adventures a lot of snow too and it's october but <laughs> either way we're doing our circularization burn and then we're just going to wait for the ksc to come around or us to come over it and then we can start our deorbit burn and we will land ourselves hopefully back at the ksc spoiler alert some things do not go as planned for this landing but you know stay tuned guys gotta you know promote the viewer duration even though all you know by all likelihood you guys have all probably left by now because not a lot of people watch to the end of my videos which i mean does kind of make sense because you know a lot of the times the most interesting part of a kerbal video is the launch and that happens like at the beginning like right at the beginning so kerbal videos aren't really great for viewer retention but you know if you're at the end of the video or you made it this far thank you much appreciated because um, view duration, average view duration, and the amount of people who click on the video over uh, how many times it's recommended, uh, those are the two most important metrics uh, for getting a successful video. So, you know, if you, you know, you clicked on the video and you watched it all, like, all the way through, so you've really helped. Thank, thank you. And uh, I am almost back to the KSC, and uh, you guys won't have to watch any more video, and I'm sorry to waste, uh, you know, 15 minutes of your life with my weird X-37 thing, but coming into the KSC, now we're going to be landing not actually at the KSC runway or any anywhere, we're going to be landing a little bit off to the side because we did encounter, we encountered a mechanical failure, totally not a my fault failure, but you can see when you deploy the gear, the nose gear does not deploy. Uh, it says cannot deploy well stowed, which is weird because I tested it beforehand and it, it worked, so I don't know what's going on. Apparently it doesn't want to work right now, but Either way, um, we kind of have to. We have to do a little bit of an improvised landing. So what I do is I, I I touch it down, you know, nice nice buttery landing as always, nice smooth landing, because I'm the greatest pilot ever. And then we're just going to slowly, slowly, very slowly lower the nose onto the onto the surface of the ground. 
so you know we don't explode it. This is why I landed on the the grass next to the area because I don't think the runway is really long enough. It might be, but it's just it's just easier. You have more room to maneuver here. So we're just slowly, slowly bringing it down, slowly bringing it down, just making sure we don't explode the thing, which uh, thankfully we uh, we don't, and the nose comes down nice and gently, and then we have touched down to the nose, and then we are just going to hit the brakes and stop the thing and bring this video to a close. So that is going to do it for today. Uh, be sure if you want to come back tomorrow uh, for the next video, it will be another Make Yours Great Again video. We're probably going to be making a rover, so that will be fun. But that is the end of today's video, so I'd like to thank you for watching. See you next time. Please rate or comment to the video once again. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time, and bye.